Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of In-Depth School and Community, a topical show that features issues uh, confronting the schools and the community here in Concord. I'm really pleased today to bring this show to you. It's called Where Are They Now? And what we're doing is focusing on three distinguished graduates of Concord High School who've come back to the community, come back to the area to work, to raise their families. And I think it speaks very highly to, one, the Concord community, and two, the Concord school system. So let's meet our distinguished guests. On my far left here is Mr. Tony Chanella. Welcome, Tony. Hi. Tony is a proud 1983 graduate of Concord High School. Next to him is Ms. Leah Willingham. Thank you for having me. <laughs> our pleasure. Leah is a 2013 graduate of Concord High School, and rounding out our distinguished panel is our assistant principal here at Concord High School, Mr. Jim Corkum. Welcome, Jim. Thank you, Dr. Bass. Uh, Jim is a 2002 graduate of Concord. So we have a three sort of age group, three eras, if you will, representing um, our school district and the community. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, how they uh, respond to us in terms of what their thoughts and, and feelings are about how they grew up here and what things have changed and what they would like to see uh, down the road. So let's start with you, Tony. So it goes back a few years <laughs> to 1983, but talk to us about your experience uh, in the school system and um, what kinds of things you learned and what kinds of things you took with you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me, and it's great to be here with both of you. Um, I think this may come off negative, and I don't, I don't have a very good filter, so mm -hmm. um, and so I just tend to blur things out, so I apologize ahead of time. I was one of those kids that could have potentially fallen through the cracks because I really just didn't like school. Right. I didn't have a problem with Mr. Foley or any of the principals. I didn't have a problem. I had tons of friends. Mm -hmm. I was one of those kids who had maybe like three really close friends and then was friendly with most everybody else, mm -hmm. but never really had like fit into a clique. Um, and there were things I loved, Mr. McLeod's film class, I hid in Ms. Marr's art class, I took every art class I could take, and then, <laughs> apologize to my mother if she's watching, she, my mom forced me to take all these like college courses that, that I, I didn't want to go to college, and right. I, I wanted to be in a rock band, yeah. and so I was forced to do all these classes that I didn't do well in because that was what you did, yeah. and um, the great thing about the school was, that, you know, Tony, you don't apply yourself. Yep, I know, and it's okay, it's gonna be okay. And, and they kept pushing me and pushing me, and I kept pushing back, but that allowed me to also work well in the things that I really loved. Uh -huh. I did photo with your book. I yeah. was the school newspaper editor. Yep. Uh, we didn't have all of the great things that are in CRTC, but you, we had some of them. You mm -hmm. know, you didn't have the graphic design department, which right. would have been great for me because I could have done sure. all of my photo and artwork and everything else and then gone into the career aspect of, uh -huh. of the graphic design. So in many ways, the school system and the school here has expanded, but I made it through okay. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of opportunities for kids not to fall through the cracks because they literally can, if they're like me, they have a lot more options than did before, and you guys did okay way back when. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, you've been nodding your head yeah. the whole time as yeah. Tony was yeah. talking, so, so yeah. talk to us about this. I mean, the whole issue of you know, falling through the cracks yeah. is a big deal for us right yeah. now. Absolutely. And we're trying to you know, find new and better ways to make sure we yeah. catch kids mm -hmm. uh, before they do fall. But it's really interesting to hear your perspective. Again, it's going back a few years, but nonetheless, you found a way to connect up with various uh, opportunities that were in the school system at that time. And though they don't, that wasn't, doesn't line up with what we currently have today, it still provided that opportunity for you to make a connection and to say, hey, I can do this. Yep. Yeah. Jim? And I just think, as, as Tony's speaking, I just can't help but think of kids who have had now over these past few years who could have potentially been those kids who fall through the cracks and some of the ways in which the school has evolved over these years, and I think yeah. of one, um, as we're going to be coming into course registration season, right. is you look at our, our program of studies. Right. And I, I, I venture to say we have a program of studies that would match up against anybody in the state. Uh, sure. I would guarantee it. The amount of offerings that we have here at Concord High School for every single kid and every si single uh -huh. type of passion um, is just limitless. And I think the community, the school board over the years has been so supportive um, of when we've come to propose these new courses, and we know we're going to have kids who are passionate about this piece of social studies or this piece of English or this piece of math. Um, and it may not be like your traditional uh, course that people may have, like right. think two years back when. Sure. Um, might be cutting edge, something progressive, but it really has been a, a great way of making sure all kids belong here and have um, a way to find those things that they're passionate about as they move forward with their life. Yeah, so, so uh, we'll get to Lee in a second, but, <laughs> but I want to go back to Tony's comment about you know, the passion that he discovered uh, working in photo and doing the editor of the, uh, the, the yearbook and the newspaper and all those things. Mm -hmm. So there was a passion that he found yep. in that zone, if you will. Yep. 
What was your passion? Was it was it football? Was it other things? <laughs> I, I, I I may have paid a little bit more attention to athletics a little bit when I was in school <laughs> more than I did my schoolwork. And I know there are some teachers who are still here who who might tell you the same. Um, but it was just something for me in terms that just really, like kept me focused. Yeah. Um, you know, it was if I was someone who didn't have those extracurriculars, right. um, as a lot of kids now, I, I'd probably have too much time in my hands, might be getting yeah. too much trouble, yeah. um, and yeah. not utilizing my time as best as I could. So sure. that was something that I think um, just taught me. Um, uh, growing up and coming through Concord High School was, right. um, you know, you, you keep a full schedule, but at the same time, you learn to utilize that time better and make yeah. sure you get done what you need to get yeah. done. Yeah. yeah. Leah, how about your yeah, experience? I think yeah. um, what both of you said really resonated with me. Um, I think um, it's kind of a benefit and a challenge to the Concord School District is its size. Um, mm -hmm. And because of its size, we have a lot of um, opportunities here, right. which are like fantastic. I uh -huh. think, like, reflecting back to when I started it, in ninth grade at, at Concord High, I think it's easy to feel overwhelmed because it is such a big school. Right. Um, but I think as I made my way through my years there, I was able to find kind of my niches where I felt like mm -hmm. I could make connections. Mm -hmm. I think when I was um, an upperclassman at Concord High, um, I really took advantage of a lot of the English electives that we have and I think still have. Like I was able to take journalism. Sure. Uh, we didn't have a newspaper then. We did have a website that we would post stories Time out. To, we, we had a newspaper back when you were there? Oh, it was terrible. It was like four sheets. <laughs> it was really bad. Um, <laughs> But you know, I mean, you know, we did have a really good yearbook. Uh -huh. You know, it's, it was uh, mm -hmm. looking back on it now, and it's so old. Yeah. They, they look as good as the ones today. They're uh -huh. full color now, but yeah. we had black and white. You had to know how to to to, uh, to um, develop your film. Sure. You know, there were all kinds of activities. Uh, wow. Krista McAuliffe was the the. Uh, faculty advisor for the World Affairs cool. Club, no you know, kidding. which I was wow. involved in for, for all of my years here. Wow. And so, I mean, there were, there were really cool things that yeah. got through. Now, the other thing is, too, we didn't have the great um, theater program either. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And my point. The theater in. was, and this is a real testament to what has happened here, mm -hmm. uh, like Jim was saying, um, theater was like the sports were always and this is not to beat up on sports people but the sports were always kind of taken care of right and then all right. the other groups had to do fundraisers mm -hmm. and do all kinds of things to raise the money yeah and now it's like you take the theater and arts and band and you 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 have them on the same similar level as you do mm -hmm. the sports teams now which is really great that's an excellent mm -hmm. point that's an excellent point Elia, I cut you off. I'm sorry. Go oh, no, that's okay. Mm -hmm. I was about to talk about sports. So, <laughs> um, but some I I was on the the crew team for three years in high uh -huh. school too, and I think that's a really unique experience that kids at Concord High have at a public school to yeah. be a part of a rowing team, and that's something that I did, and I was able to continue doing in college. So. I really liked that. I was on the gymnastics team too when we still no had kidding. that, but I don't wow. think it exists anymore. <laughs> the crew, uh, there are only a few crew teams in the state, as I recall. Yeah, there, Hanover, there, there, there are more. Yeah, Bedford has one, uh -huh. uh, Manchester has one. No kidding. Uh, wow. But we competed against private schools, we yeah. competed against St. Paul's and Exeter as nice. well. Um, it's something that I think is becoming more common, yeah. but when I started, we definitely were one of the few. Um, and we had, I mean, we have that amazing boathouse by Everdurian. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, and a really incredible experience for high school kids to, to have. So you all had good high school experiences <laughs> and you all had opportunities to kind of find a niche that was you know, beneficial to you. And the next question is, you know, why did you come back to Concord? You know, what is it about the Concord community that led you to believe this would be a good place to come back and, and work and raise a family? Because all three of you live in the area and all three of you work in the area. I see Aaliyah shifting, which probably is my cue to oh. go over. <laughs> <It's your turn. laughs> um, so, if I can step back for one quick second, I couldn't wait to get out of the place. Yeah. Right? So, I left home around 17. Yeah. I moved to New York City. I wow. lived there for two years. Yeah. Uh, I, I then fell in love with a girl who was up here. So, I moved back for six months and then we moved to Boston where I lived. I almost married that girl, but I ended up marrying somebody else. Um, and then uh, after about 18 years, it actually was 9-11, so um, my wife, my current wife, or only wife, I should say, my girlfriend at the time yeah. lost her job. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, trying to make a radio career, and right. it's, not, it's like, you know, not really, you know, I'm going in and out of campaigns for wh wherever I could find work. I didn't want to work in retail anymore. Yeah. I'd done restaurant and retail for just so wow. long. Yeah. So, um, it was, it, I built a media career for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I started from the ground up, basically wow. doing stories at 25 bucks a story. Wow. And in my, in my late 20s, and, uh, and 
when I moved when I moved back, it was it was really 9/11, and then this is going to sound bad because the gender thing. It was like, well, honey, I guess we should start raising a family since you're out of work anyway. <laughs> and you know, she, my wife would agree with me. It was something sure. along that. You know, it was sure, like sure. we could figure out how to do it. Yeah, you didn't have to worry about maternity leave, right? You know, or any of those things. You're already out of work now. Yeah. She had a skill and, mm -hmm. um, and and could do freelance work. Yeah, that's and, great. Um, and, I, and my family had property here, so it was one of those. It was it all kind of worked out. Yeah, and and you stayed. I mean, obviously, you're, you're raising your kids yeah, here. I moved going back, to school. Uh, it's been almost uh, since 2002. And you have children in the school system. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yep. Great. One here too. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> and and a, and a middle and a, I have to I have to keep saying it's a, it was Runlet Junior High School when I went, but the middle schooler. You know, right. So. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. that's great, Leah. Uh, yeah, like uh, Tony, it was not necessarily my plan to come back to Concord. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, like any teenager growing up anywhere, there is a wish to experience something new sure. and different. And um, I went to school for four years in Western Massachusetts, so mm -hmm. not too far. But I discovered that I wanted to do journalism partially because of the class I took here at Concord High, nice. um, journalism wow. class. Um, and I came back in the summers to work at the Monitor, it's just where I could get an internship. I was living at home on my break from school, and a job kind of became available when I was getting ready to graduate. And um, I really loved working there. I found that um, I didn't know as much about Concord as I thought. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think <Yeah>. you, <laughs> I, something I like about the job is that I'm always learning about sure. it and kind of in a different way. Mm -hmm. When you're growing up here, you have communities you're a part of, you have yeah. people that you're close right. to, but um, you don't necessarily know how does, the, how does the city function, how does the school district function. Um, We're still trying how to figure does, that out. Yes. <laughs> 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 um, don't say that too loud. <laughs> How, how do all these pieces kind of come together? And sure. I think through this job, I've been able to be in places that I never, you know, yeah. would have imagined that I would get the chance to go to. Two weeks ago, I got to go on a tour of the water plant in Concord. Wow. And it's yeah. just kind of Different. cool things yeah. like that that yeah. you, don't, you don't think about yeah. how, how do these things actually work when you're right. growing up in a place. And so I really liked that. I feel like I've learned to appreciate uh -huh. uh, so much more about Concord since yeah. I came back. And especially living in New Hampshire, another thing is... Um, Kind of the outdoor recreation mm -hmm, opportunities mm -hmm, here. Yeah, um, I really feel like I've been able to take more of an advantage of, sure. of that. Uh -huh. um, I mean, this is just—it is a wonderful place to live. Oh, that's um, we great. We have everything here: oceans, mountains. So. Yeah, yeah. You're essentially located. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Jim? Yeah, very similar to these two. It wasn't always part of the plan. Yeah. Um, you know, went to, I went to college in Massachusetts, and um, after getting my undergrad, I, I decided that I did want to pursue education, and never with what the up, intention. What about the football? We still yeah, I'm that. sorry. I guess that wasn't going to be in the cars for me. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I guess, um, so I come back, you know, wanted to get into education, and yeah. the part of the plan never was I'm going to be working in the Concord School District. But, right. um, so I, I uh, entered a master's program full-time. Um, and while I was doing that, I said, hey, a great chance to start getting my foot in the door is to start doing some substitute teaching. And so right. um, I started subbing in Concord and Manchester and uh, the place that was constantly calling me, I was getting the most uh, work was in Concord. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and so many of those people who I grew up with who were my teachers, you, you, you kind of still maintain those relationships. And sure. you start seeing them and they help you grow and, and, and help you see kind of um, where, you can, where you can develop within this field mm -hmm. and making those connections and... Um, it was really just reminding me of what a special place it was. Mm -hmm. And then even then, I get into that, that season after I finish my master's, I get my certification. Okay, I'm going to start applying to, to schools now for teaching jobs all over the state. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's, it was really just dumb luck um, the way it kind of worked out here. I was leaving an interview yeah. um, somewhere, somewhere close to here. I want to say it might have been like Hennick or Hillsborough, somewhere mm -hmm. that area. I was leaving a, a, an interview, and I get a call, and they say, hey, uh, a position at the middle school just opened up. Mm -hmm. The person's going going out. Um, get your stuff in as soon as you can. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I just I just left an interview. I still have resumes. It doesn't say the school name, like run the middle school on it. Yeah. They'd say, it doesn't matter. Get in here. Let's we'll go yeah. through the interview. Um, and I was just fortunate enough that that worked out. And after being in the school again, um, those connections you made with people really just pan out as into the professional world. Um, and it ended up being a great place to be. Wow. Um, I, I did I did take a two year hiatus. I went to um, a district um, in the Lakes region um, for a mm -hmm. middle school assistant principal job for a couple of years, but then when this high school job opened up, I, I couldn't come back here fast enough. I wanted to be wow. back in the Concord School wow. District. So, nice, yeah. nice. I, Tony, what I noticed about the community, and obviously you, you know this really well because you, know, you cover the community, but there's this interesting connection between community folk and the schools, and everybody wants the schools to do well. 
Everybody wants the community to do well. In some communities, you find the community is here and the school is there. And there's this huge divide. And the school is just a place we go to because we have to, but the community is something separate. That's not true here in Concord. No, and in fact, both, both Leah and Jim said, too, is that their connections to the community assisted them in not only feeling like they were wanted at their next employer, but right. also needed at their next employer. Yeah. And I can tell you, and this is just because she's here, I'd say if she wasn't, <laughs> but um, it's much more difficult to compete with, um, with a reporter like Leah, yeah. who, who has um, roots in the community, mm. than it is somebody who isn't. Right. And that allows me to be more on my game and to work harder, too, mm -hmm. for my readers. So, and I like that, I, it's not really competitive, it's diff they're different formats, but that news gathering process by which, how am I going to, how am I going to do better Similar to the sports analogy, you know. Sure. Well, okay, I fumbled the, you know, the run the last time, and I got to figure out a way to navigate that guy right there right. on the next play. I get the ball. So it's it's those types of connections with the community are are what really help people mm -hmm. and and help you stay too. Um, most people aren't really driven out of a lot of jobs, whether they're at a law firm or they're mm -hmm. in a nonprofit or at the school. You know, they become in part of the community. Um, and I think you find that, I think you find that also that nobody wants to, and I think you find that in divided towns too. I've seen that in, in towns that are divided. No one wants anybody to fail. Right. right? Mm. It's, it's more of too many cooks in the, in the kitchen not liking everything, and I can tell you that from other communities I've covered, that they get these little wars in these small communities over over you know what kind of fire truck they buy. I mean, and 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 that creates that animosity. And what you don't always see here, what you don't always see there that you see sometimes here is everybody wants to put the barn roof up together. Right. And and that helps. You can see that in the Boys and Girls Club auction, which has gone on forever. Right. You can see that in in, in the in the Kiwanis yeah. stuff. You can see that in what the Bektesh Temple does every, yeah. you, with their fundraisers. Mm -hmm. Everybody is connected, mm -hmm. and everybody wants everybody else to help and help the community you know, thrive, too. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting because um, the, the collective conscious that you're talking about, everybody kind of wants to be working together towards the same main goal. How can we make our community a better place? It's really interesting to hear you say that because if you take a city like Manchester, where I've lived for the last 40 years, so Manchester's divided. You have the north end and you cross the border, you know you're somewhere different. That's the north end. Then you got the south end. That's a whole different world too. Then you got those people who live on the west side and they're completely different. Now I'm being somewhat facetious, but you, you, there's a very clear division among the folks there. And so that collective spirit is not as present as it is here. So I'm gonna disagree with you slightly. Go ahead. <clears throat> Concord is becoming similar to what you described in Manchester. Oh. And so the West End where I grew up yeah. was a working class neighborhood. Right. It's not much anymore. Uh -huh. And I don't like to use some of the terms that other people on both sides of the political aisle have used to describe certain neighborhoods in the community right. and how things are moved around. Sure. Leah did a lot more covers than I did on the, on the Pennacook Affordable Housing Project, which right. is outside of the Concord School District, but is a microcosm of that. Sure. You know, you have this really gracious farmland not far. You have the new plant, you know, the new monitor plants over there. Yeah. You've got some really nice townhouses, and then you plop 56 units of, you know, so it's like... We're going to start to, I'm trying, help me, you're a better wordsmith than I am sometimes, that I'm looking at, I'm trying to find the word that describes, we don't want to collect people like they have in Manchester. Yes. Where only certain people get to live in the North End. Right. Or the West End of Concord in the North End of Manchester. Right. And certain people are shoved over to the West End of Manchester and on the Heights in Concord. Yes. And there is no plan for that. Yeah. There is, and it isn't anything you can plan for in many ways here because sure. it's hard, it's expensive, you know, yeah. it's 150 grand a unit before yeah. you even pour cement on some right, of these, right. you can't, you know, it's not, and that doesn't include the refrigeration or, yeah. you know, it's very difficult, but we are starting to segment pe 
people in the mm -hmm. city. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that because I grew up on Essex Street. Yeah. So did Barbara Higgins, who lived yeah. next door to me and yeah. was like my big sister. No kidding. Her mom and my dad dated. Wow. And, that's and, really and, too funny. No, and it's like, that's the weirdness of, you know, so now I live way over in the woods and she lives over there and all of our friends live in various parts. And now there's houses that there's no way a journalist can afford, right. even though a factory <laughs> worker, right. who was my mom, yeah. could afford it. Yeah. So that's the, that's, mm. I'll stop it's, there. It's hard to <laughs> afford to, to live in Concord, I find, as a young person. Mm -hmm. I think that's a struggle that we have. We mm -hmm. want young professionals to come here, but mm -hmm. uh, finding an affordable, affordable housing, yeah. housing is really, really hard, I think, for a lot of so, people. So to so. Tony's point, you're saying that the affordable housing issue is really what's segmenting folks. In some ways, I think. Uh, I think Concord is just kind of changing, and we're trying to figure out how to um, make it a place where everyone can afford to live in some degree, yeah. but uh, it's harder than, it's a harder, and you it's harder than you, you, you there, Not to go off the tangent, but Jim wants to jump in, but there's a top, <laughs> we have a topic. So, so it costs like a yeah. million dollars yeah. to lay a mile of water pipe. Yeah. I can't just go and, I mean, I have a little lot, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like, I could easily put three units, you know, a three-unit sure. duplex if I had 20-foot frontage, which I don't. Yeah. But how am I going to get the water and sewer up there? Right. So, right. I mean, in all the places that we can develop, yeah. you it's going to cost millions of dollars to put water and sewer there for an apartment building, which is why they only build McMansions. Yeah. So, it's like, it's not, sense, yeah. it's not just the yeah. developer's fault sure. or the mm -hmm. city's fault or the zoning rules no, or anything else. No, I, We're I, talking real, it's expensive. Yeah. So, it's like... It, but but the but the end result is sure. we are really becoming segmented into neighborhoods and not in a good way I don't think. Well, I bring up the point only because um, if you look at the Concord schools, for example, mm -hmm. one of the strengths of the school, and you can speak mm -hmm. to this, is this kind of uh, heterogeneous uh, opportunities that exist for everybody. Mm -hmm. So Lee and I can be from very different worlds, but connect up mm -hmm. while we're at school because of all the various things we have there. And what you find is that kids feel very comfortable being with one another as opposed to, you're from the North and I don't talk to you. Right. Well, uh, and you don't yeah. talk to me because you see me as someone who's lesser than. Yeah. Jim? Again, I, 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 that just speaks to the uniqueness of Concord High School where you come to school here, you come really any school in the Concord School District, and you're going to interact and work with kids from all walks of life. Right. Um, when you look at New Hampshire as a whole, as compared to the rest of the mm -hmm. nation, we're not a very diverse place. Right. Um, and, and it's very few places within the state that you have that diversity. And we're fortunate enough to be in Concord here where Good you point. do get that those you know students who, who, who come from affluent backgrounds, who may not, students who, who may be refugees and... and um, oh, let's speak about that for a second. That's abilities. an important point because you guys didn't have this, I don't think, or at least oh, not I did. Oh, you did, um, but you yeah. certainly didn't. We had exchange students. We did not have refugee students. Because when you see Manchester did this too, but it didn't mm -hmm. work out quite as well. So you had the Refugee Re Relocation Center. Mayor Baines mm -hmm. actually got yep. that in action in Manchester. It was a good thing, don't get me wrong. But the assimilation didn't work out as well as we would have liked. When you look at Concord, the assimilation is spectacular. I mean, I was in Tim Bolio's class, the Math Science Collaborative, and there were maybe five, six kids from Tanzania and other neighboring countries. Mm -hmm. So I went over to talk to them just to kind of see. I'm thinking in my head, there's no way they can be, you know, on par. They were there. <laughs> I mean, they were right there. And I was talking to them. They go, oh, yeah, we get it. We get it. We're looking forward to the rocket launches and this and that. So, I mean, the assimilation is incredible. And the good news about all that is so people like Leah and I say, hey, these are people from another world, so to speak, and I can learn so much from them. So the exposure to people who are different than us is really advantageous to the school system. And I can say that that comes to the quality of teaching and the quality of hiring in the district. Um, you know, we've all dealt with headlines and our own comments about situations in any, and this happens in every school district. Right. It really does. It's not, a, what happened in Concord is not an anomaly, but that's a fraction. That's, and even over a period of time of all the stories that I've heard over the years, it's like a handful of teachers. 99% of the other teachers, even when they phone it in, they're doing a good job. Yeah. And, that, that, and that makes the other ones who go up even more and right. higher and produce, right. and, and produce more right. and, and don't stop working right. for their kids. Yeah. I can name at least six teachers off, like right off the top of my head, mm -hmm. who, who I may not have been the route everybody wanted me to go, sure. but I had teachers who cared. Mm -hmm. I had teachers who prompted me to mm -hmm. care mm -hmm. about myself, yeah. and who, who helped me shelter myself right. when I was you know, 
unstable about something sure. or not doing well in a class sure. and saw the points. And I've seen that through with my kids' education, too. Uh -huh. There have been great teachers along the way, and you can tell who they are. Mm -hmm. So when you say, you know, I went into this class assuming that they weren't going to be on par, that comes to back to the level of the quality of teaching. I can't speak to that teacher. I don't know them. Yeah, but, yeah. But there are really great teachers in this district and always have been. You may want to respond to yeah, that. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And I think um, it might have been a piece even Leah did in the fall on um, uh, our geography classes. And yeah. um, what they had done is they, uh, our ninth grade geography and cultures classes, were doing a unit on human migration. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the big competencies within the geography mm -hmm. curriculum. And the teachers had come up with this plan of, okay, we're going to be looking at why people move, where do they move, what are mm -hmm. those factors in terms of influence and movement of humans around the world. And what better way where we have this great population of kids mm -hmm. who can actually be taking the lead and, and teaching right. their peers on, hey, here's my story uh -huh. on where I was originally. Here's why I moved. Here's how things ended up. Mm -hmm. And again, I think going back to Tony, just the quality of teaching and, and being able to utilize our diversity to, to a great success mm -hmm. and driving home a great point to our kids, I think is just phenomenal. And, I, and I, again, um, you know, we have teachers who are absolute experts in their content. Mm -hmm. They are um, experts in educational philosophies and best practices. But what it comes down to is the reason they're here is they're passionate about working with kids. And that's, and that's what we want. Yeah, well said. Go ahead, Leah. Oh, I just, I think uh, for me, uh, being here in, in 2013, that was one of the most uh, valuable parts of my high school experience, the diversity that we had here and my uh, ability to be ex exposed to that living in New Hampshire. Sure. Um, like we had the Be the Change Club when I was here and Anna Marie De Pasquale mm -hmm. was working here and um, with a lot of the New American students and kind of a cool thing coming back to Concord has been being able to work on her, with her on some stories mm -hmm. about uh -huh. um, just I mean, the school district in general, but particularly like a lot of those students and their stories. Um, and I just think we're so lucky to, to have that. And it has, I mean, the district has changed so much in the last 10 years. Yeah, yeah but I mean, speaking of the whole, we're lucky to have that. I, I want to pick up on that. So I, obviously, I've been around a lot of different school mm -hmm. systems uh, throughout the state of New Hampshire for a variety of reasons. And, you know, what I found is that unlike Concord, many school districts, they have teachers who are there for two, three, four mm -hmm. years, and they're gone. And so they have to rehire. And so the vision, the ability to bring in new initiatives, the ability to kind of change the culture of the building is hampered because you never have the, 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 um, what's the, word for? the seniority of the mm -hmm. faculty to, to kind of lead you through that because they're, they're changing over. Mm -hmm. And what's nice about Concord is, and you can all talk about this, is you, know, you have teachers who have been here for 20, 30, 40 years. And why? Because they love it. And I think that continuity and that strength that you, you all talked about really helps out in the long run mm -hmm. in terms of students and other folks coming in saying, there's a tradition here. There's a sense of movement mm -hmm. here. And there's a sense of, um, I'll be well taken care of, I think, as you pointed out, because there is this sense of caring that you get mm -hmm. from the teachers. And again, not to be disrespectful <laughs> to other school districts, but in many cases, you go into those classes. And yes, there's an exchange of information. And there, mm -hmm. there's t good teaching going on. But what you find different here is it's more about, well, Jim, how are you feeling? Mm -hmm. You know, what, how, how was your weekend? And the kid knows that you, you know who they are, you care about them, and you want them to be successful. And so when you have that as a mantra, you know, amongst all your teachers in any building here in Concord, it really brings the kids up. I mean, they raise the, the level of their game because they recognize you really care about me. And, and believe me, kids know when you don't care about them, they pick up on it immediately and they turn off their hearing aid because you're not interested in what I have to say anyway. Not to go off on, and I'll try and keep this very, very brief, but yeah. um, because that's not the focus of your show, but one of the... That is a state issue. Yeah. Concord teachers are some of the highest paid in the state. Good point. Um, and that's, that's, that's not a negative or a positive. I mean, you could say it's a negative when you look at sure. property tax bills. You could say it's a positive for the teachers who want to come here and then stay right. and create that stability. Long term, though, as a leader, both of you are leaders in the, yeah. in, in the education field, you, you don't individually have a responsibility. We as a society do. We as, a, as journalists do. We have to get to the point where many of the school districts in the state are, have the ability to be able to do that without bankrupting the property taxpayer or, well or creating an income tax, which is what many people like me who moved from Massachusetts right. for many years ran to escape from. Right. So um, that, that, that balance right. is is well done here right and, and it's hard to yes. find that in other places yeah uh, last comic oh no <laughs> um i just i think um 
I mentioned feeling lucky coming back here. I think uh, before I was covering Concord, I covered some other school districts, uh, Franklin and Pittsfield, yes. and uh, you're really able to see that disparity. Um, I was able to take AP classes here. I think we have like more than 10 yeah. offered at Concord High. Sure. Um, you know, in Pittsfield they have none, in Franklin they just added one or two, and That's I think that is definitely a challenge that I didn't have to be aware of right. when I was yeah. going through the Concord School District, but no. it's definitely Good point. exists. Good point. And clearly, you know, we'll bring up a topic for another show, and maybe we'll have to <laughs> yeah. do that. But I want to thank our distinguished guests uh, for coming in today. It was really interesting to hear, you know, why you came back to Concord, and I think our folks will appreciate that. And so stay tuned for our next show. Next week, I think we're going to be doing uh, competency-based education, Ooh, which I think the community one. would like to hear about. <laughs> so thank you all, and uh, stay thank tuned you. for next week.